Putin's commanders abandoned posts and demoralized conscripts in Kherson. Russia is yet to admit its heavy losses in its invasion, while Ukraine's armed forces claim the number of invading personnel killed in battle now exceeds 74,000. Vladimir Putin faces more setbacks as Russia commanders reportedly abandon their positions in Kherson. Kherson is currently at the center of Russia's invasion as Ukraine plans its counterattack to take back Russian-occupied city. A Western official told the Times it will be impossible for the Russian president to maintain military presence in the city if Ukraine succeeds. The official claimed commanders are leaving demoralized and leaderless conscripts to face the Ukrainian advance when it arrives. They added, they've decided that Kherson isn't worth fighting for but that natural defensive barrier of the river is extremely valuable to them. Russian soldier reveals troops have refused orders amid provision of dead equipment. Kremlin military leaders are being defied by troops on the front line according to translating phone calls made by serving Russian soldiers. A phone call made by a Russian soldier has revealed his battalion refused to follow orders from their commanders amid growing tensions between serving soldiers and Kremlin military officers. The news comes after intelligence reports suggested Moscow was struggling to provide adequate military leadership for groups of newly mobilized Russian troops. During the conversation, the active serviceman also claimed much of the equipment provided to Kremlin forces was dead as he described the sorry state of a number of their vehicles. In a translated phone conversation with his wife, the Russian soldier reported, We went out yesterday and only came back today to the old positions. They say they wanted to transfer us to Krematorsk, everyone refused. He later added, The colonels don't come to us for six, seven days in a row, or the command in general. When his wife asked if he had any news of when the war could come to an end, the Russian soldier responded, I don't know, we don't know any news at all. We have one senior lieutenant, he doesn't know, anything, either. He only went to fight so that his son wouldn't be mobilized. The phone call, reported by online organization War Translated, comes after UK intelligence reports suggested the Kremlin was struggling to provide adequate military leadership to head to 300,000 men ordered to mobilize by Vladimir Putin. The Ministry of Defense said, major elements of Russia's military leadership are increasingly dysfunctional. At the tactical level, there is almost certainly a worsening shortage of capable Russian junior officers to organize and lead newly mobilized reservists. Defense officials have argued the weak structure of leadership within the Kremlin armed forces has likely contributed to an atmosphere of low morale among fighting troops. Further into the conversation with his wife, the Russian soldier highlighted the dysfunctional state of the armored military vehicles issued by the Kremlin. He told his partner, I'll tell you more when I return, but our vehicles are just, everything they're advertising, there's none of that here. The vehicles are completely dead. Out of five BRTs, on three the turret doesn't rotate. Another's barrel lifts up and falls down instantly. Another one, which has eight wheels, the device for going over mud doesn't work on it. The UK Ministry of Defense has reported incidents of Russian soldiers referring to their own vehicles as aluminium cans, highlighting the weakness of the Kremlin arsenal. Data suggests the daily Russian loss of armored vehicles within the conflict increased to over 40 a day throughout October. Contextually, this is roughly the equivalent to a battalion's worth of equipment. In the face of military supply difficulties, the Kremlin has acquired stocks of additional tanks and other infantry vehicles from Belarus, although the ongoing destruction and capture of Russian vehicles by the Ukrainian forces has continued at an alarming rate. Under threat from depleting morale across their armed forces, the UK Ministry of Defense has reported that the Kremlin has constructed blocking units which threaten to shoot Russian soldiers if they retreat from the battlefield. Putin's Achilles heel exposed as Ukraine prepares for all-out drone war with Russia. Over the past couple of months, Russia has been deploying drones against cities like Ukraine's capital Kyiv and the southern port city of Odessa. According to the US, Russia took delivery of 1,000 drones from Iran at the end of August. The drones being dispatched in Ukraine, including in Kyiv last week, are known as single-use or kamikaze drones because they are not intended to survive their mission. Iran has denied exporting any weapons for use in Ukraine, but Volodymyr Zelensky's government has still ejected Iran's ambassador from the country. The drones are particularly devastating due to the psychological impact on residents, spreading fear and disrupting daily activity. But according to Matthew Schmidt, Associate Professor of National Security, International Affairs, and Political Science at the University of New Haven, they will not withstand the precision technology being developed for and by Ukraine to shoot them down before they can even strike, he told Express.co.uk. The next few months will see something new in warfare, a true drone war. Getting drones from Iran shows how desperate Moscow is. The world's largest nuclear weapons state never fully developed this key part of modern war. It expected to fight a glorious redux of World War II instead. And while these drones are likely to continue to cause civilian casualties, they are unlikely to be game-changers for Russia. 
Kyiv has proven adept at shooting them down and has also announced a purchase of drones designed to counter Russian drones by knocking them out of the sky and jamming their sensors. Last week, UK Defence Minister Baroness Goldie has said she thinks Iran would be appalled to see the devastation caused by kamikaze drones in Ukraine that it supplied to Russia. Answering questions about the situation in Ukraine in the House of Lords, the Tory peer asserted that Iran is a country of honourable traditions that takes pride in its international position. She said she thinks Iran might want to think again about providing such weapons to Russia to use in its illegal invasion of its neighbour. Lady Goldie said, I have to say that Iran may be a problematic country in many respects, but historically it is actually a country of honourable traditions and I think pride in its international position. And I would have thought it was appalled at seeing the footage of what these drones were achieving and delivering for innocent citizens of Ukraine and I would have thought that might want to make Iran consider just where it is in this. When asked what the UK might do to try and persuade Iran to end its military support for Russia, she told peers that severe sanctions are already in place. She said, I would remind members that sanctions, and severe sanctions, have been applied both by the UK and by the UN against Iran and we continue to review how it is and how we can persuade Iran to reconsider what it is doing. Meanwhile, Iran has also been in the news over ongoing protests in Iran by women and girls, who are risking their lives to fight the harsh regime. Protests were triggered over attempts to reimpose strict hijab rules, as well as the death of Masa Amini, a young woman killed in police custody after being arrested for wearing her hijab incorrectly. When Russia retreats NATO missiles will take out tanks and its game over Stuart Crawford. All eyes in the Ukraine war at the moment are on the developing situation in the Kherson Oblast, and more specifically on Kherson city itself. This is the only major conurbation captured early on in the Russian invasion and held by them still. The Ukrainians have made significant advances here over the past few months and their enemy is being squeezed inexorably into a pocket around the city. There are conflicting rumors about whether the Russians intend to flee or fight. Remaining in the city on the right, western, bank of the Dnipro River risks them getting cut off and eliminated. From a purely military point of view it makes eminent sense for them to abandon their present positions and establish their defensive lines along the left, eastern, bank of the river. The Dnipro is a huge waterway, 5 kilometers wide in some places, and a massive obstacle to further Ukrainian advances towards Crimea. An opposed river crossing is amongst the most difficult operations of war to carry out successfully, and calls for in-depth training and combined arms cooperation, dry rehearsals away from the enemy's watchful eyes, and huge logistic resources. It's not the sort of task that any army would take on willingly if there were easier alternatives. So there's much to be gained tactically from the Russians abandoning Kherson city. There is some evidence already that Russian flags have been removed from public buildings and that Russian roadblocks have been dismantled, and there has been some movement of troops by ferry slash pontoon back across the river to more easily defendable positions. Whether the Russians will be able to withdraw their heavy equipment is a moot point. The bridges and ferries have either been rendered unusable or are in constant danger of interdiction by long-range precision artillery and missiles. Here is where the US and NATO supply Mars rocket systems and GPS-guided Excalibur 155mm guided artillery shells have played a major part in shaping the battlefield.